Um, so with Giuseppe De Nittis, the other artist um, from Italian Impressionism, but he's not really an Impressionist, De Nittis. He's more a salon painter, a studio painter. And this subject with, of the two ladies walking in the cornfield is a mixture of Impressionism and traditional salon painting. The figures are much more carefully painted and the background is a pastiche or an attempt at Impressionism. And if I look at the colours involved uh, here, uh, I've got in the cornfield um, yellow ochre and white and a little Camden yellow. That's certainly one colour. And another colour would be a sort of lighter burnt sienna, crimson ochre and a little white. And something even a little darker than that would be the equivalent of burnt sienna, but it's just I've added up from marine to crimson and yellow ochre and white. And I have a little, I have a little bit of grey. The figures are that's um, up to marine white and a little bit of crimson and ochre. I'm trying to match that grey, so I'll have to get closer to it. The figures, though, are. Only a tiny bit of the image. The rest of it is uh, landscape, and he has very subtly suggested texture um, in amongst these weeds, uh, the, the white flowering plant, whatever it is. He has put a, a subtle suggestion of corn or the ears of corn, a suggestion of what the rest of this field is. It's very loosely painted. Um, and I think it's painted on dry, which would not be in the spirit of Impressionism. Somebody like Monet, who I think Dimitris admired, and Dimitris spent time in Paris, so he must have seen Monet's paintings, because this composition is rather like a painting by Monet of his wife Camille uh, wandering in a poppy field. Um, but Monet painted generally a la prima all in one go and this is this is not painted in one go this is painted in layers on dry a little bit of texture in there i think in this field and then the suggestion of slightly nearer plants and foliage so little bits of little bit of texture and quite a lot of warm yellow color according to this print in this particular image there is a a paler sort of cloudy look to the top of this um, corn and then a richer colour a little bit lower down so I go for the darker colour and have a go drawing very lightly on dry with a slightly diluted colour to draw into the stems of um, it doesn't exactly look like corn, it looks more like weeds here. Well, where he's painted them in more detail is against the, um, the, the dress of the woman wearing the paler dress. And he's sort of drawn, you can see where he's scribbled. And scribbled over here with a suggestion of something else growing in the cornfield. That's very loose mark making. It's the complete opposite of this. Uh, so very loose mark making in here. Sort of just holding the brush very lightly and I think ro rotating it a little helps to give more random marks. So if you're painting uh, someone sitting in the garden at home in the spirit of this uh, subject the same idea would apply, that the background matters less, that the figures matter more, and how, those, how the contrasting ways of describing the two elements can come together in a single image. A little suggestion of uh, something going on there, but not, not very much uh, detail put in. So ochre and crimson and ultramarine make um, we'll make a slightly darker colour, something like that, that's more like a um, 
burnt umber. Um, and there's, there's, there are heads of dried flowers here in this passage in the foreground. And he's just painted those in um, a little bit darker. It's difficult. They're not, they're not precisely done, but they are there nonetheless. The sort of casually placed foreground information. This is nearer, that's a bit further away, so there's not so much information describing that area. But there is here, there's some more mark making on the left and scribbling of foliage grasses. So in grass with grasses this would be a lot greener, um, different time of the year. This looks like late summer with these colours. So that, that dress sort of comes down here and then we've got this area of shadow. And part of this is dress and part of it is shadow. And he seems, the artist seems to have put a um, slightly different colour, unless it's just this print. He has put the colour there that is a little bit cooler, a little bit more purpley grey. So this, this part here is just not quite the same colour. Uh, it's got a hint of blue mauve in it. Uh, this, this part of the fabric is, looks like it's pleated and the pleats fold in little concertina shapes, something like that. It's a little bit lost there, what's happening. There's a little bit, so there is a distinction between that and this pool of shadow. Well, the shadow is very definite, and that's not really what shadow's like, I think. Shadow doesn't always have such a sharp edge, um, because it's always changing. Shadow moves and changes. There's a hint of green in there, and it's a little bit different from everything else, so I'd be cautious about making it all rather similar. So I think shadow can be not the same colour everywhere. So there's a little hint of that, some of that colour, possibly there. And there's some more of this colour, this um, blue-green colour over on the left behind this foliage here. And this is much more loosely painted. So it's just sort of scumbling, scumbling and turning the brush as, as you apply the colour. Over here it's all a bit lighter. What has he done uh, with the edge against the sky? He has blurred that a little bit. And that's, that's a device in painting and drawing to create a priority of edges. So the edge further away is less important and the edges that are nearer. So this edge is less significant than this, these edges. And um, I can try and get near to that value. So if you're coming back to a painting after a little while and you're correcting something, you want to try and get close to the value that was there originally. It's fairly close, it's a little bit too dark, something like that, it's quite close. So this edge, I feel he has softened, he's just worked into this edge a little bit and blurred it, it's not quite so sharp. And that could apply if for someone sitting in a garden also. We have a priority of edges, but not all the edges are equally important. So the field, the corn field, this is all a bit lost. It's also what happens with photograph photographs and depth of field that this wouldn't all be in focus. Um, if he, I don't know, Dennis has used photographs. He might have done. Um, Something like that. So that's a little bit broken, whereas the rest of it is more merged. That's all sort of um, so. If I have got a reasonable amount of detail, 
this isn't quite developed as much as it could be. But the, so the last sort of stages of this that I would like to put in are the lightest things. Having spent time building up darker areas, the lightest areas, the lightest things are these little, um, looks like wild cotton, uh, fluffy little white head, seed heads um, on top, sort of going in last of all. It's quite high up there, something there, something there. A little cluster of them against this blurred distance. So in nature, these would not be regularly placed. They would have to be, um, we look for irregularity. So it's a particular, he's taken care to make this look natural by placing these at irregular distances. Um, so that, that's quite a clear contrast there, right in this area. And here also he's got quite a strong contrast just on this um, break of the shadow. So he's put white flowers or white seed heads into these dark areas to make contrast. Make contrast there. So it's, it kind of puts the figure in the landscape when you're in front of the figure. Something like that here and here. I'm looking all the time for small differences at this stage, but also adding light and establishing contrast. And lastly, this foreground, this lower foreground, there is a sort of tan colour, earth colour, right in front here. Something a bit like that. So that's, that's ochre and white and crimson. And by putting this in, we put the emphasis on the area of contrast up further up the image. So he's avoided having detail right in front. And the detail, which he's put here, is more in the sort of near mid distance. It isn't in the near part of the image. That's interesting because that's not typical, I think, of a lot of paintings that live near part of the image is lost to focus. I want to eliminate any excess of white at this stage that is still the canvas coming through and that then by doing that puts the emphasis on the white that is painted, particularly the painted area here, painted area here on the white seed heads. The randomly placed red poppy heads or another clue to distance in the image because the ones that are further away tend to be uh, obviously smaller and, and the sort of V-shaped shapes and then the much larger shapes nearer and that can be just cadmium red and a little bit of uh, cadmium yellow making a sort of vermilion red. And those poppies are very useful visually because red, little notes of red, just enliven or warm up a painting. And if you're painting a spring garden and you've got flowers in the garden, then red or orange or yellow, just different from all the green and the ochre. So that's, I think it's not by accident that there are poppies here, apart from being a little homage to Monet, which I can't help feeling it is, um, it's, a, it's a really good visual device. Uh, this gives a contrast to green. It's the opposite colour of green on the coloured wheel, so that is, um, gives visual drama or difference. So I haven't worked too much on this area, I haven't worked at all on that area. I feel like don't really want to paint portraits or do a lot more to that. I've drawn a little bit into the parasol with a dry brush and the stem or the handle of the parasol. I've got the hand of this figure to put in holding the parasol. I have tried to make the difference clearer between the distant part of the image and the 
near a part of the image and how this edge here becomes more smoky or blurred. And I think that is, to, to achieve that in oil paint, you would need to use this a little bit wet into wet. But other areas of the painting are wet on dry. So this is all wet on dry, I think, and these marks are wet on dry, but some parts are wet into wet. Two very different ways of painting uh, to give an impression of sunlight. And the theme is sunlight and shadow, um, looking at Italian Impressionism.